welcome. This is Mark Taylor and Carol Avery from Primary Music on Fire. We're just going to make sure that there are some people watching and that you can see us and hear us. We think we're all set here, but we have tried these things out. So just, yeah, if you can see us, if you can hear us, give us a, a like, give us a share, just so that we know that everything's working as far as, as, far as we can, your end as well as it is for us. So yes, we will just uh, keep chatting a little bit mm -hmm. before we get going with all the, all the content as well. And yeah, the fact that we're actually here at the end of the summer holidays. And I know, you've, and you've, I know you've been working really hard. <laughs> I have worked you? really hard all this summer, but I wanted to. It is, uh, yeah, something I need. I wanted to get done. I wanted to rehash various schemes of work I had on the go. Um, actually, a lot of instrumental teaching. Actually, I wanted to rehash some of that. Pulling in a few more of my classroom um, pieces into my individual work and then crossing them back over again. Yep. And I just needed to sit down and spend a month uninterrupted. Doing that. So you can do that, that yeah. Works. When you're not in the classroom, <laughs> when you're not in those things. So if you are watching, yeah, give us a give us a like, give us a share, so that we can tell that everything's working for you. Everything looks fine this end, but we'll just wait to see if people are um, are tuning in, so they can actually hear what's going on, and then we'll then we'll get started. So the other thing we wanted to talk about today was the fact that we know there are different types of people that have come through the Education on Fire um, podcast network, Facebook page. You know, some of you have come through our ukulele challenges. Some of you have actually come through signing up to the Primary Music on Fire email. So you've got your free rhythm downloads. Um, and some of you have come for us through the podcast. You've been listening to the podcast and, and heard what we've been doing and what and sort of come to us that way. So we wanted to make sure that we were we were here so that we could, you could see us, you could understand what we were doing, um, explain a little bit about how our academic year coming up is going to look it's slightly different for carol than it is for me and explain what we do and how we do that how it fits together and how we can support you so if you've got any questions that you want to ask just write them in the comments we're going to keep an eye on the computer and see how the feed goes through as well um or if you're watching this on a on a on a when you come back <laughs> if you're not here if you're not here live um and then just leave some comments and we'll, we'll keep checking back and, and answer anything which mm -hmm. which comes in so yeah, just another second or so. Give us a like, give us a share, um, and then we'll get started in one minute. So anything else you want to say before we, we crack on into the actual What have content? I been up to? So um, I was working really hard yesterday and I couldn't help but share with you today. I've been working on this new Rhythm Cups thing, which I've done a lot um, in uh, my individual work, but I've not done it in a whole class. Um, and I couldn't think why I hadn't done it in my whole class, because it's so easy and a lot of fun. And I know the children are really, really going to enjoy enjoy doing that. So I've written a whole scheme for classroom work and it goes from absolute basic to what I think is going to be too hard. We probably won't use the final page, but we might. Yeah. Um, and, and I did remember why I didn't do it before, because when I first got introduced to Rhythm Cups, it was when Pitch Perfect came out. And if you want oh, to yes. have a good look at this, YouTube Anna Kendrick, Rhythm Cops in Pitch Perfect, and what she doesn't do with this cup, tippity tappity tippity tappity. <laughs> and I had my daughter was about 14 at the time, and she was amazing at it. And I just looked at that and thought, yeah, leave, leave well alone. And the children in school will be on the playground doing this thing, and I'm like, oh, I can't do that, that's just really, really hard. But that's kind of gone away a little bit, and so now, now is the time yeah. to push in yeah. with, with the Rhythm back. Cops, and it's going to be really good fun. So it's not quite finished yet. But as soon as it's, it's going to be there. there, and it's going to be inside the membership, isn't and it? it's going to be inside the membership. membership. And I'm going to use that as my rainy day plan. I like to go outside as much as possible when I teach. And how can you compose a piece of music indoors when you've got thirty children there? Because you can't try it out. That would just be chaos and a bit mayhem, wouldn't it? Loud, very loud. So I like to get the doors open and we take the instruments outside and we spread. And but then you wake up and it's pouring down because in England that happens a lot. Happens quite a lot absolutely. <laughs> Especially on the day it knows you want to go outside. So um, I think rhythm cups will be my in my pocket for when when it's raining yeah. and we need a, a, a not 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 a filler as such, but you know um, something that we would be worthwhile. Yeah. Um, what we can do on a rainy day and then we can put it down again and maybe pick it up yeah it sounds like a lot of fun having it's seen that film quite a few times with my kids <laughs> over years now <laughs> and uh, yeah that's the sort of thing that it gets that wow factor like I say and something you can do as well yeah. yeah and I mean the cups as well I went to you know one of the pound shop places and um, and I bought 30 cups for a pound and um, I thought there we go. Yeah. That's going to work. And um, you know, if you've got more permanent ones, then you know, they're not very pretty colours or anything. I've got this time round, but we could do that. Yeah, you can add the design and feature and, and do the artistic. Yeah. Side. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, you could let's, brand them. Yeah, you could. <laughs> 
We could do a whole series of Prime Music on Fire Cups. There we are. There we are. There's the, the next idea. So let, let, let's start, shall we? Let's, yeah, let, yeah. Let's, um, let's explain what we're doing. So as I said, we're part of Education on Fire Podcast Network. I've got three podcasts which are on the network, um, which are Education on Fire shares inspiring and creative things going on in schools. Um, Learning on Fire podcast, um, I interview people who are basically living life on their terms and they, ex- they explain their their education background to give you an idea of where they came from. But then the most important things which they learn, whether it's from a mentor, whether it's from a resource or whatever, that's really enhanced their life to enable to live life on their terms, whatever that happens to be, they're, whether they're large business owners or whether they're living quite a small life, but actually really happy in what they do. Um, and all of that sort of also is being supported by the National Association for Primary Education. Um, and they actually have sponsored the network over the last year. Um, and I produce a podcast for them as well. So you can hear about their message and the sorts of things they do. And I know people's voices are very important. And it's having an organisation like that that do a, are able to speak, to speak to ministers and that kind of thing. So we can really, you know, those things that we'd like to be able to change at that sort of level. It's those sorts of people that can help. And so that's why I'm really grateful that they, they're on board with the sorts of things that we're doing. And they're very supportive with the arts and music and that, which is absolutely brilliant. So the Primary Music on Fire membership site, which is what we're here talking about today, is our membership site where we wanted to be able to support primary teachers deliver music in school. And one of the things that I was asked and Carol was asked a lot was, what am I going to do in my music lesson now? How does it fit in with the other things I'm doing, whether it's topic work? You know, what's, what am I going to do for Christmas concerts? And so after we've been asked that for well, quite a few Genetics. years, <laughs> so we decided what we'd do is we'd actually just create a membership site so we could sort of put some of those things together. But we also know that every school is different. And because every school is different, we wanted to be able to then have a community where we could actually answer those questions and actually mm-hmm. support people in whichever scenario that they're in. I mean, that's a really important aspect. So what we did is we sort of came up with this idea, which is, to make sure you can see that, it's going to be backwards most likely because we're where the camera is, but it's basically a pyramid. It's called a primary music on um, fire, foundations of a musical school pyramid. And the idea of that is that at the bottom, it gives you the sorts of things that everyone can do in school. So if you happen to be a music specialist, then of course you're able to do that and more. But at the same time, it might be that you're a primary teacher who wants to deliver music, but you're a bit fearful, you're not quite sure how it goes, you're not quite sure what you want to deliver or the musical aspects that you need. And so within the membership site, what we decided to do was to have that very first stage. It's that hand-holding into what it is that you can do. And what that means, it's like, essentially, let's get the kids into a room. Why don't we sit them in a circle and we'll give you an idea of some rhythm games. And the great thing about the rhythm games is that it's very interactive. It's very moving. People can, you know, don't have to be sat really, really still. They can do things in different dynamics so they can shout things they can do it silently there's all sorts of things that you can do and that can be a whole music lesson or it can certainly be something you can feel within the rest of your day as well so it starts at that really basic level all the way through to then maybe learning ocarina doing some samba doing recorders Um, we've got boom whackers which were a lot of fun in there as well and we've got videos of those things to show you how you can put those things from the very beginning levels the first lessons that you can do with all of that and then from on there the great resources that we use all the time which then developed through um so that was kind of the thinking behind it wasn't it that was kind of how we decided to put it together and then we can support you in terms of what it is that you want to do from there so you know how do you get your music hub involved how do you get peripatetic teachers coming in learning how do you then create an ensemble because you've got lots of children learning instruments you know where do you go out of school you know is there do you do a young voices concert idea or do you actually then think oh actually we can do our own one in the community we've got lots of people with those experiences and we know everything everybody's different every situation is different and so that's kind of how we got that whole pyramid idea you know the basic things that everyone can do whether you've got a musical training or not and how you can layer the extension up one of the big questions we had quite a lot was but how does that fit in the school year and that's kind of where we are here with our sort of planning lessons and, and the lesson plans that we've got for the entire year because of course We've got almost, you said earlier, two curriculums going on, haven't we? we we've got the... we've got The musician curriculum. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. in terms of what yeah. are we doing to learn music. Yeah. And also it's all punctuated by the seasons and the things mm-hmm. that are going on in the year. So sure. talk a little bit about how, how you plan on mm-hmm. that sort of thing, how it works. Generally, as we go back in September, um, certainly in this country, we hit harvest the day you get back. Um, because harvest festivals generally take place at the end of September, so you've got to be on that. Um, and that'll be generally your singing assembly. There'll be topics going on in the classroom for that. Then you have a lull, 
um, which is generally when my music um, curriculum takes over because of course as soon as we come back after half term we're booming to Christmas um, things um, then I generally after Christmas I do winter in January and February because it's very difficult to overlap those two you want to do some really lovely wintry things but Christmas has got in the way so you're then doing your nativities etc so when are you going to do these lovely snow poems and snow compositions um, things so I tend to put those in January February um, connected to my curriculum then and then we start going into spring and Easter which the school takes over again and we tend to keep working it round and round and round like that if we've got World Cup if we've got Olympics school will be doing something about that so we pull music back in, um, in into those so that's again the school's curriculum and in between those times I'm throwing my curriculum into it and by my curriculum I mean teaching you about rhythm teaching you about pitch learning a new instrument possibly recorders then trying to connect that to um, the world's uh, and, it, and, and there. with the Olympics next year, of course, oh, it's, it's going to be a massive thing. You've Honestly, got a whole easy. series of things <laughs> to do. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So you had some sort of lesson plans that yeah, you had because, yeah. of course, the other thing that we we haven't mentioned yet is the fact that it looks different from reception year one Very to year much. six, and so. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have asked in terms of, but I need a lesson plan for every single lesson. And actually, in our experience, it's much more mm. global than that. Mm -hmm. But then the experience of how you put that together and how you develop it, you know, it's that kind of, mm. once you've learned two plus two, it's not that you've done it and you move on to something else. You build on that mm -hmm. as the skills yeah. go up. And the same thing yeah. we, applies in the musical fashion mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And I write my lesson plans over a six-week period. Obviously, we sometimes get seven week times, um, but I, I aim it around six, around six weeks. Um, within that, I then separate. I've got reception and year one kind of work in a similar way, um, and then we are two, um, and possibly year one works um, again, depending on where you are in the year. And then three, four, five, six, they're a whole other group. Um, so if we're if we're not talking in in English terms, of, you probably work that out, can't you? Reception year one are your fours and five year olds, and then you got your eleven year olds up there with year six, um, and what we're talking. Um, so reception, as soon as I get back in reception, they're going to just be doing lots of action songs, getting to know your songs. We'll be using instruments, and the aim for the instruments is to get them out of the box and put them back into the box. And what we do in between that is absolutely great and such good fun, because these really little ones, fresh to school, very new to school, just want to have a lovely time. And you can pull in play at that point, you know. Yes, I know they have to learn the sounds and the letters, and we can do that through music as well, but it's a really nice opportunity to do play. And I pulled a couple of books that I really like, um, this. So if we're on my curriculum, the music curriculum, this is a book, Out of the Ark, of course, always Out of the Ark. Um, this is called I Love Music, and this is part of their My World series. It's got a little, that's their logo on the top of it there. My World series is absolutely gorgeous and it's aimed at key stage one children. Um, and some of my favourites in here, bang, tap and stop, guess what you do to that? <laughs> right, you got it. <laughs> you get an instrumental version as well, so if you really want to be, you change it around a little bit and don't just want to bang, tap and stop, but want to go fast and slow and things, you can use that. Um, march to the beat. The surprise for the winner. <laughs> the one who Tell can, us what you do one. to march to the beat. Yeah. Well, look, you do run into the beat and you march to the beat and you jump to the beat. So these are really, really easy things to just pop on and get on with, with the children having their instruments. So I really love this book. Lots for the songs as well in there, but those are my, my favourites. Um, the other one I, I'll be working on with year one as well as reception, actually, is this one, Bingo Lingo, which is um, slightly phonics based. Um, absolutely love this one. Supporting literacy with songs and rhymes um, is, is what they say. And this is an AMC Black. Um, one. Helen McGregor um, has written this one. She's written lots and lots of early years um, of music there. So I would be using that one. So if I move on from my action songs or my instruments in reception, year one, um, their school has got a topic um, which is traditional. Um, those were the days is what they're calling it. So I've decided to do traditional um, playground songs um, for that, that one. Um, and I team that up with some modern ones and my favourite out of this is um, Old McGregor Had a Zoo. So we'll do, we'll have all the animals out and we'll go through Old MacDonald and depending on what animal somebody's holding up depends on what vers version we're going to sing. Are we singing um, Old MacDonald Had a Farm or Old McGregor Had a Zoo? Um, which is really lovely and you say to the children, well this is a, a traditional song but which was the new song in that and that's very lovely um, to do. Um, so these two books would last you all of your 
key stage one and early years foundation and um, that you can really point and shoot if i just show you actually the isle of music again so you've got your words on one side it's a cd but this is one but on that side obviously you're not going to be able to see the writing in these bubbles but this is telling you what to do and how to cross curricula as well and they've done a really good job um, on this and, and thanks to the arc are brilliant and um Fantastic. and we, we've spoken to anna on on many occasions mm. and um and and they just have that essence of you know, it's all about the children. You know, the yeah. whole thing started with people that were in school. They were teachers. They created mm. resources that they were doing in their school, and it grew from there. And I think the ethos of the company has been maintained in that, even though it's now grown into. I think, I think they're in almost every primary school in the yeah. in the country. It's certainly I've not come across one that doesn't have something yeah. from out of the arc. And I think people love them so much that they're prepared to just go. Certainly myself, they're prepared to just go. Do you know what? We'll try that. Yeah. We'll buy that book. It's not that expensive. We'll buy it because everything else they've done is so such good quality. Yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. Go. And you don't need a whole scheme of work like no, you do no, for no, something no. To just buy the book that you need mm. or whatever it happens to be. And I'm just going to show you this one while we're at it. I'm not using this this time, but this again is another from the My World series. And this is about space. It's a really, really um, fabulous resource on loads of songs to do with space to do with aliens as well because quite often the little um you know groups you don't necessarily do planets but you do more um aliens don't you um but it has got planets as well and songs about the moon and in this series as well you also have um, mini beasts and colors and patterns and shapes um isle of maths is another favorite of mine but that's all from that series um so i would definitely invest in some of these um if i was in the lower end of that school or just me because i like buying the books but, uh, so, we'll be outside in year one, we'll be doing in and out the dusty bluebirds because that's traditional. Um, what else will we do? General nursery rhymes. Oh, this is a lovely one I like to do. We sit in a circle and we do the ABCs. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, N. And I used to do this when I was at school. This is an ancient, ancient piece of music. <laughs> and you go through. When you get to the end of the alphabet, um, you burst into Twinkle Star and then you go back to the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and we've got a rhythm pattern going on. I, J, K, L, N, O, X, Y, Z burst into Barbar Bar Black Sheep, back to the, the alphabet. Um, and Jack and Jill works, any of them work in those gaps as well. And it goes on for ages. And you can do solos at that point as well. Um, if somebody wants to sing Twinkle Star on their own, that's a really nice and, and, thing And I think that's, that's important, isn't it? It's the fact mm -hmm. that what you're then doing, without really thinking about it, you're incorporating the fact, like mm -hmm. you said, there's rhythm, there's coordination. Yeah. Even at a young age, I'm always amazed how much more children at that age can do mm. without you having to teach them. It's just yeah, stuff yeah. that they do. You know, they're used to moving mm. around. They're used to doing those things. One of the things I used to always do with the very young ones was I used to do head, shoulders, knees and toes, except I'd never sing it with them. We would mm -hmm. do it silently. So the, the, the lesson would start off, first of all, all you have to do is to copy everything I do. And it might just start with just a bit of basic coordination. It could be anything. Mm -hmm. And then gradually, bit by bit, I'd make it a bit more complicated. I might make some funny noises, which makes everyone, you know, everyone gets in, excited about what you're doing mm -hmm. there. And I'd finish this little exercise off just by doing head, shoulders, knees and toes. Except at the end, I would do something daft and point to something and they're going, but that's, that's wrong. Because they're in their head, they were already hearing that particular yeah. head, shoulders, knees and toes. I hadn't told mm -hmm. we were doing that. But then you start to understand their musical brains, their understanding has already been developed. They were hearing a melody they've learned mm -hmm. from preschool or whatever that's coming in. Yeah. And that's the start of using yeah. things like mm -hmm. Kadai and, mm -hmm. and melodies, you know, that they're really mm -hmm. integral things. Mm -hmm. It's just a simple game. And it's those sorts of things which, as Carol said, develops with the idea mm -hmm. of the actual That ABC one. Well. As you go through the school and you've got five minutes, um, or you want an opener or something, you say, what would we like to say? That ABC one is yeah. a real hit. Yeah. Um, because by the time they get to about seven, they're going really fast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. and, and, and those yeah. musical skills. And, and when, when, I, when I, was, I, I was working in, in, a, in a fantastically arts-based school in London called the Lyceum, and my job in the early years there was to really just to give them that fun and understanding of music mm -hmm that they could then incorporate when they started learning an instrument slightly later on. They had a jazz band and an orchestra and 
senior choir and junior choir. I mean, it was such a musical, musical environment. But what we were doing was just that kind of thing. We're used to sitting around together. We're used to starting together, stopping mm-hmm. together. Like Carol said, when you get the instruments out, it was just that kind of, you know, what sort of dexterity do you need to use, yes. you know, when you're scraping or touching? Yeah. You know, that's a metal one. That's, yeah. And it just needs you to be fun. Don't, yeah, you, you don't need to sit there and, and, and be um, regimental about that. Let them play it upside down. Let them play it back front. Have them ask, does this need a stick with it? How am I going to do this? Inve- um, explore the instrument as well. Everybody play the instruments that are made of wood. Everybody play it now and stop. Everybody play an instrument made of plastic and stop. Does your instrument have any metal on it? Because obviously it won't be completely metal, will they? But then they're looking for these things. But what they like to do with the wrist bells, because they've got fabric on them as well, so I'd say, you know, because put that goes around your wrist. Um, anybody with fabric on their instrument playing, I'm expecting the wrist bells to play, and somebody will find a thread on their instrument that they've got. <laughs> this is fabric! It certainly is. Yeah. There's always something one step ahead. But you're cross curricular again because yeah. these children are exploring materials. And then how does it make that sound? Um, and you have a good look. I like to do that in reception. So I'm going to quickly move into my year twos. So these are seven year olds. Um, in the UK, these would be um, at the top of our key stage one. So our top infant children. And they have got a topic pretty much straight away on the Great Fire of London. So we would be starting the whole term with old year one songs because that's what we do i'm not gonna go straight in so i said today it's the great fire london get on with it um no i'd like the teacher to tell them the story a little bit first maybe you know but once i'm aware that topic is underway i'll get my um great fire of london class assembly can you guess it's what, what's the competitions today who created this book it's not out of the arc. It's out it? of the arc, yeah. And this is from, that's what I call the class assembly. And they have got Egyptians and they've got, I know they have Vikings because I asked them to write it and they did write it. I don't think they remember me though. We'll the mention o- it next time we see it. It was the only, oh, I've mentioned it so many times. <laughs> <laughs> it was the only one I didn't have. Um, yeah, we had Egyptians, we had Romans, we had um, ancient Greeks, the Great Fire of London, Shakespeare, and I didn't have Vikings. And the very next year, after I asked them, well, talked to them about it, one appeared. I need a credit on that. <laughs> so that's what I call a class assembly. These got a little bit of play script in them and they've got three songs. Um, it's uh, words on the screen, so they, um, they go red as, as, just, as that line comes on. Um, so you don't have to do a huge amount of work. The children will want to work it and they'll want to work at the computer as well, so that's great, you know, at that point. Just sit back and enjoy. Um, so the Great Fairy London will tell the story um, but along with that, so that's the school side of things, they need to get that done as a topic. Alongside that, I would teach the song London's Burning, which actually isn't in there. So I would teach London's Burning, and I'm going to get my musical stuff out of that. So I'm going to work on a little bit of pitch with it. So I'm going to sing, London's Burning, London's Burning, fetch the engine, fetch the engine, Roderick, you call in response. Fire, 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 pour on water, pour on water, where was the highest note? What word did we sing on the highest note? And so then we're going to use our hands. London's burning, London's burning. Fetch the engine, fetch the engine. Fire, 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 fire. Did you spot it? There you go. Pour on water, pour on water. Where was the lowest note? And we tap our eyes for the lowest note. We have good discussions about that. Um, we could stand up to sing that as well, which gets everything, everybody stretching um, too. Um, and then we'll start breaking it into a round. This can go on for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, wouldn't do the round the first week, that would be the, the, the next week. Um, and two part round, four part round. Um, just keeps it going. Really. So that's my musical side. We've done, we've done rounds, we've done spotting that the high and low, we've done call and response. So many little things we've done just for London's Burning, as well as we've got the, um, the assembly on the go. There's also in here a really lovely fire dance piece of music and they do give you a suggested dance for it. I don't use that one. Um, I get the scarves out, um, uh, nice um, uh, 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 lacy scarves and of beautiful colours and we'll make our own fire dance. So starting from nothing to growing and growing and growing and growing and the children will create that dance. So again... It's got a little bit of everything going, yeah, and there absolutely. hasn't it. And you could do composition and stuff from that. Yeah, as well, yeah, 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 yeah. And this, yeah. and I think this, this is the important bit where we talked about the development of things going on. You know, so from even those younger years when you're sort of that you've got instruments and you're knowing if it's wood, if it's metal, how you're going to move things around. You know, if you're like, well, what sort of music? 
do you think the fire of london how do we represent mm -hmm. that you know they're already thinking well i know this instrument makes this type of sound and yeah. not how do you play an instrument it's what do you want sound? the sound to be yeah. produced from yeah. and then yeah. and, and so it's all happened very organically at that point yeah. and then it's the creativity that they, then comes through and then you can start talking about mm -hmm. how you're going to visually do it whether you're going to do is some sort of graphics yeah, or and, artwork in that right kind of and you know if you've you, you've probably if you're doing great Ireland and you've you've come across some poems as well so pull them in as well and create you know around that using your instruments too and of course this is we're talking 1600s for this and so we've got Handel great British composer, stick on a bit of water music. Then um, uh, Arrival of the Queen of Sheba couldn't be more different to the water music. Um, the children will probably recognise Arrival of the Queen of Sheba, actually. Uh, try playing it too. Can you play that? Um, I have played it, actually. It's one of the things I learned when I was learning my tune instruments. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. Um, and Vivaldi, as well, he's not, not a British comp composer, but Vivaldi put it for spring on by Vivaldi, beautiful piece of music and you can put those on at any time and you're listening to this music from that period at the same time so that's my year too it's, it's quite a lot going on in that year there too is, isn't there, there is. and, I, and, and, and one thing that else i'd just like to point out there is the fact that there's also the difference between your music lesson which you might start with all these games and things we've been talking about as well but it might just be that you're able to pull that in you know i've got the water music's on uh, mm. we've just got a couple of minutes Let's listen to Use that, that now. You know, it's not, it's <laughs> yeah. not that every yeah. music lesson has to be very, very structured like that. It might be that some of these ideas are things that you're doing all the time. The rhythm games you mm -hmm. do might be something that you do, oh, well, we're just waiting to go into lunch and we just want to mm -hmm. be moving around or, or you just need a bit of time out from what you're doing mm -hmm. and you want to do it. And so you could, you start to incorporate the whole thing through. And it's slightly different, obviously, if you're a spe uh, specialist music teacher going in doing it with your hour or three quarters of an hour or 20 minutes or however long it happens to be, as opposed to being a classroom teacher. But that was the important thing we thought about creating primary music on fire is the fact that we can help you with that. So if you are a primary music teacher who's done very little of that music, then we can chat to you within the group and explain how that is. We've got a private Facebook group where we can discuss that. Um, whereas if you're a specialist, then a lot of that stuff you might be able to do already, but you may not have come across some of the out-of-the-art stuff. And so we can explain the sorts of things that we use and mm -hmm. why we do it. So that's why it's sort of multifaceted, mm -hmm. really. And I think as well, when, when you know that we are music teachers, please don't think that we spend our life um, working on this stuff. We are as busy as you. Um, I have a very large private music practice as well, teaching um, piano and um, woodwind instruments. I have five orchestras that I direct, various orchestras, bands and things, three recorder groups and two choirs. So my brain is not focused solely on the Great Fire of London. I pick up the, the school's um, topics and go, OK, let's figure it out, sort it out, right, like that. So we are, you know, I think you think we, we only teach music, but no, actually our, our jobs are really, really diverse. Um, yeah. as well we have many things going on as you do but we have the experience of having done it before yeah, you yeah, see yeah. so if you said yeah. i'm doing the great fire of london what are some ideas we, these are the sorts of things we'd be able to explain yes, and whatever yes. your topic happens to yeah. be we've probably covered it's it over with, the years within so. that we're not solely working just on key stitch music we're, yeah. we're doing lots of other things exactly. because talking of which you're three four five six i tend to run them as the same so this will be our juniors um our seven through to eleven year olds i'm only going to do Boom whackers next home with them. So if you go into, if you're in our um, on our membership and you'll have a look and you'll see, there's my boom whackers scheme of work. I'll pick it up at various points um, depending on the year group. I'm not going to do the same with year six as I am year three. But all of the work I'm going to do on boom whackers is all in there. Um, year three will probably start towards the beginning of the PowerPoint, um, and I'll pick up another section of it depending on where. Uh, where they are and where we left off last year I always start with with boom markers um and years three four five and six um I did say I'm only doing that didn't I I'm not really only doing that I mean that's the only instrument though that's yes, true yeah, amongst doing. all the other things yeah. that you're, you're doing as well um so. year four five and six will be off to young voices after Christmas we've got some work to do we've got to learn the lot they have to learn every word they have to learn every dance move they have to learn all the harmonies that's my job done. Thanks very much, young voices. They gave me a book telling me how to do it. So um, what to look out for. Um, so we're going to start young voices because there's a queen medley. How easy can this be to teach? So we'll be learning the queen medley. I don't need to learn the words. I know them. 
There's a lovely Disney um, mashup, um, which will be really, really popular. So imagine how this is looking in your music class. You've done, you know, 20, 30 minutes of Boom Whackers. You're now going to do about 15 minutes of your voices songs. Um, we'll pull the dance moves in as time goes on. The children will teach me then. They're all on a video. You literally just put that They'll on. learn them first, yeah. yeah. can do the music. I'm not very good at the dance moves. <laughs> Um, and we'll also be doing some listening to Beethoven's Wig. Um, this year on Young Voices, they put some really, really lovely words to Ode to Joy, which is Beethoven. So thank you for the tie in there. So that'll work. We'll do quite a lot of work on Beethoven this time because it's there. This time next year, I won't necessarily do so much work on Beethoven, but because it's there um, in that song, we will be. Year three, don't go to Young Voices. Um, so I will put some of the songs in there because their siblings know them, so they are singing them at home as well, so they do know them and they want to do them, and we do put some of them in singing assembly as well. But we'll be sticking with Harvest, not necessarily um, the ones in singing assembly, but I'll be going into my other songs, Conkers, Big Red Combine Harvester, I Can Eat a Rainbow, those things, so um, most um, seasonal songs. Um, which brings us on to singing assembly, doesn't it? Harvest, for at least the first month, and then are we are we doing our questions in this one? Or yeah, yet? absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If, if you have any questions, mm -hmm. please do write them in the comments, and, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll keep an eye mm -hmm. on on any of those things. And if you're watching it, um, as we said afterwards, on as, as a recap, mm -hmm. then just do that as well, and we'll we'll make sure that we actually. Um, I did have a question. Somebody had asked, "What do I use for harvest?" And I out to the ark, and um, they've got a great book, um, a combine harvester. No, it's not a combine harvest. <laughs> That's right. It's not there <laughs> and um, it's absolutely wonderful. And in that harvest samba, it's my favorite, absolutely favorite one. There's a beautiful harvest hymn in there as well. I'm not going to tell you which ones to do because you, if you go on the Edge of the Art website, you can hear samples of all of them. And if you're thinking, well, I haven't got time to buy the book now, and well, you have because it would come to you in about two days. It's they're, they're very quick at that. But you can also download those and stream those, so um, you can buy it digitally. So that works really yeah. nicely. Um, so, so. Oh, they have another one. There's another Harvest one. My World series has just bought a Harvest book out. So it's aimed at those younger children. What I liked about it was um, it's not just about the Harvest Festival, but it's got lots of songs about food, about farming, about growing. You can use those all the way through the year. It's not specific um, to that. Great. Um, we have had a question. Oh. Thank, th thanks very much. Um, we've been asked, would this work for a non-religious yes. school as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Are we talking about the harvest songs? It, it doesn't say, it doesn't else, say but specifically, but yeah. I would imagine so. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, out of the ark, if you go on and have a look at, um, at, at, for instance, a combine harvest, you'll see maybe one or two pieces, one or two songs that will have a religious context in them, and the rest want in, in there. They do have a whole religious side of things. I love their um, essential hymn. Um, series um, as well um, but they tend not to put those in uh, to their, their, their other books um, so certainly um, all of the assemblies I was showing you and the My World series they're definitely not religious yeah. um, the other the really popular assembly series is the one that's um, called a song for every dot 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 so you get a song for every assembly, a song for every season, a song for every occasion. Occasion's lovely. It's got some harvest ones in. It's got remembrance songs in. It's got a couple of, of Christmassy bits um, in there. Um, so um, And you can either buy the whole series. They do a very good offer for the whole series. Or you can just buy specific ones. Again, you'll find one or two religious um, songs on that, but not very many. Not yeah, very so many you can do a combination. I, yeah, there. I've done a lot of um, non-faith-based schools. Um, yeah. And we work just fine without the yeah, art. Yeah. yeah. And, and and the assembly things is, is an important factor because it's really good if you can, if you depending on where you are in your sort of musical journey within your school, if you've got some instrumentalists, no matter how long they've been learning, I think to be able to show what they've been learning in an assembly yeah. It could be a music assembly, but sometimes that could be more daunting if you're just starting off, just within a normal assembly, you know, whatever they happen to be learning, it could only literally be two or three notes, but it just makes that idea of being a musical school become yes. apparent to everybody. Yes. It's like, oh, so-and-so did that, and they were playing the recorder. It might be an ocarina. It might literally be a, a rhythm that they've been learning, and that's where I left the composition thing, because the compositions often come out of the topics and the things that the kids remember either from doing it themselves or oh, we did that topic last year or I remember my sibling doing it 
but you can have a different take on it, you know. Mm. So it's that, oh, that's brilliant. I hadn't thought about, mm. you know, the Great Fire of London being represented in a composition in an oral way. And then at the same time, I've seen it done brilliantly where in order to know how the composition was going to work, they'd actually drawn almost like a timeline, but a big background of artwork. Mm -hmm. And they literally used it as it was going along. That's how the composition worked. Mm -hmm. So it started with, you know, just a little bit of fire and then it got like this and then it got big and then people trying to help people in lots of chaos and all that kind of thing. You could see the composition going visually, but you could also hear it going along yeah. at the same time. Yeah. And then, of course, that goes up on the wall and it's all part of what you what you do. And then it's all just embedded, that sort of cross-curricular yeah. idea. And as, as we were saying before, the, the elements of rhythm, the elements of pitch, the elements of texture are things that you've been doing regularly within your work as well. Mm -hmm. And that's when it gets exciting because mm -hmm. the kids then take it completely one step further than you think that they would ever have done. Mm -hmm. There's an idea from somewhere, there's an understanding of something which gets developed, which is just brilliant. And I think children just really just surprise you in a, in a mm -hmm. magical do, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're not doing harvest at all in your school um, and you're doing a singing assembly, I would hit that back with, again, out of the art songs for it. I'm thinking it's songs for every assembly, but if you go on that, we'll see what you'll see the list following. They do a lot of back to school songs. They do a lot of songs about seasons. Um, you know, we're singing about the autumn, we're singing about winter, we're singing about spring. So that, again, there's, there's nothing faith based in those at all. Um, and a lot of song, school songs, and the one I'm thinking about, um, give it all you've got, give it one, give it two, give it one, two, three. We are the children of whatever school. We take a pride in the things we do. Really jazzy, really funky um, pieces of music, and that really gets the children going um, there as well. You're torn for yeah, whatever so you want to do for yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, we, we, We've covered a whole, a whole load of things, and, and I hope we've created a, a clearish picture in terms of the, the musical elements, the way it fits into topics, mm -hmm. the way it fits into the seasons, and, and yeah, the general school thing. So what, everything I was working on with my lesson plans, there was this bottom um, rung here. And then after that, we have um, our whole class, whole class instrumental and our, our um, individual instrumental lessons are on this one. And then we have choirs and, and to your, your um, country groups and, and bits and pieces of your town groups up there. But everything I was talking about would be yeah. in this bottom part of your pyramid for you then to just grow. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the things we think that you can you can do in any school, whether you've got a specialist teacher or not. And specifically, yeah. if you haven't, that's why we're here to help mm. you. So if you want to know more, if you've got any questions, as I said, put them in the comments and we'll come back to you and answer them. If you want to actually understand more about what's inside the membership, if you go to educationonfire.com forward slash membership, that gives you a good breakdown of what the sorts of things that we cover, tells you how you can get involved and how you can join. Um, and one thing I just wanted to finish on talking about the seasons is we're planning, if you saw our ukulele live video last week with Paul Mansell, we want to do a Christmas ukulele which I think will be a lot of fun. So what we're <laughs> going to do is we're going to have a live one just after October, mm -hmm. half term, where we're, we'll tell you what songs it is that we're going to learn, which songs we're going to play along to, and then we're going to have a basically a Christmas jamboree just around yeah. Christmas time so that we can all come together and celebrate that and enjoy that, which we think will be a lot of fun. But if you want to do it within your school, we'll make sure that you understand how you can do it. So if you happen to have ukuleles in your school, and I guess you could also do it with other mm -hmm. instruments as well, mm -hmm. um, but you'll be able to know that by the time you get to your you know, sort of Christmas mm -hmm. assembly or whatever it is that you might want to do, that you can do that as well. So, so make sure that you like this Education on Fire podcast network's page because we're going to have lots of information on there as well. And as I said, if you want to get involved and join the membership, then that's where all of our conversations happen and uh, and all the, all the resources that we've been talking about. So thank you so much for being here we really appreciate you watching um please do like it share it with people if you think it was uh, was really useful um and as i said if we can help you in any way just drop us a comment thanks so much for watching mm -hmm.